Good evening. Welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for 3313, Sunday, March 3rd, 2013. Choppy week this week, craziness. Uh, Short-term money continues to dominate this market, and you can see it not only on the charts here, but when we get to the profile, it'll be much clearer. But you can clearly see um, we're starting to form this little wedge here. We had some very interesting action Thursday and Friday where we actually broke out late day uh, above the downtrend line here since uh, the peak on uh, February 20th, and then pulled back, and then Friday was a really bearish morning with a gap down and then because the market was overly short with just a lot of short-term money controlling it market went right to a very visual reference of 1500 and uh, bounced back up so in the coming week I want everybody to keep a close eye on the 1500 there will not be any downside action in the market unless S&P futures are able to take this number when I say take meaning like close some hourly bars below it and then we could see a push to the 1480 so on the downside that's really the key level we can see that on uh, Friday it was a very visual reference uh, you know traders bought it up even on an ugly gap down on Friday uh, you can see here on, on the charts here this is this is the Friday action see right here and they just bought it right back up and we closed uh, you know pretty much unchanged leaving us with uh, opposing tails as I call them on the uh, market charts opposing tails is when you have shadow up and uh, shadow down um, it's not necessarily a hundred percent true that just because it's a bottoming tail hammer it's bullish uh, the action has been very squirrely here uh, certainly it's it's more bullish than bearish but uh, there's a possibility I think that we may just you know consolidate in a range here uh, in between these two areas if we look at uh, the Dow on the same time frame on the dailies I found it very interesting that the breakout here in the Dow was actually a horizontal breakout as opposed to the S&P if you recall the S&P chart uh, that I just showed you has a downtrend and we you know breaking out here over a downtrend is not the same as breaking out here making you know a new swing high and what I found interesting about this was the fact that we had the swing high and then failed it came back in to range and now popped back out so there's some divergence there the same situation is continuing to occur with Nasdaq where you can see that the Nasdaq is nowhere near those highs it's not even you know near the downtrend line you can see that it didn't even break above that line at all same thing with the Russell which was leading before now seems to be lagging and the NDX same thing uh, probably the weakest out of all of them still stuck in a range and doesn't have uh, the momentum here so what does this tell us for next week's action is the simple fact that if the market's gonna be bullish and go much further here you're gonna have to see some confirmation from these other indices um, overall as well makes me believe that things are starting to deteriorate here even though the market feels really bullish in terms of the S&P and the Dow it seems like things are starting to uh, to stumble a bit right we've certainly seen uh, dividend stocks rally a lot uh, recently um, which generally rally uh, you know at the end of a market move um, for instance if you look at the utility sector for instance look at how the rally has been so strong here <coughs> and without any sort of real pullback it's just kind of been a straight grind to the upside and yet the for instance broker dealers in the financials are lagging as are banks you have here banks you see the different the difference in picture here you don't buy these stocks here in the utility sector unless you want to collect a dividend unless you want to be safe these generally are not the issues that should be rallying uh, if the market move it still has a lot of meat in it uh, basically uh, these issues tend to rally when the trend is tired when the the bull market is is kind of coming to an end so this is something to uh, to keep in mind going forward okay let's take a quick look at the profile um, before we do I want to remind everybody that we had a phenomenal um, webinar recently with James Dalton of jdaltontrading.com if you go to shadowtrader.net right here I've archived it it was about an hour and 40 minutes long it was on Friday morning and click on the education tab in the archives and you can see right here uh, I've, I've uh, archived it right here just clicking on it takes it takes you to our YouTube channel and it'll play right here and uh, honestly it was absolutely phenomenal if you have uh, any interest at all in uh, market profile um, I think you'll definitely enjoy this very much and um, it was an un unbelievably great webinar he really uh, 
touched upon a lot of uh, interesting factors. You can see here the title is What Determines If You Should Take a Trade, and it was just really great stuff. So definitely check that out uh, right on our webpage under the Education tab. All right, speaking of the profile, let's get into it um, for a bit here. The profile is basically confirming that there is no long-term money in this market. There's lots of signals here constantly where we see long elongation to the downside and the upside. Notice that the profiles when we have big day moves are very thin. Again here, very thin. Thursday was very interesting. I wrote about this in the pre-market blog, and you'll note in the uh, webinar, if you watch it, that uh, James Dalton touches upon this as well, talking about how Thursday's action was uh, what's known as a 45-degree line. If you were to put your... Um, you know, cursor here on the P, you can draw up to the prominent point of control. It's like a 45 degree line. This is typical of traders getting themselves overly short. And notice what happens the next day. You gap down, and yet the market can't push any further. It goes to the very visual reference of the 1500. Again, typical of short term money. Short term traders are very visually oriented and they want to buy and sell at very obvious visual references that everybody can see that's how they act remember the other time frame the longer term money that's not the hot money the money that wants to has conviction wants to stay in the market for a while they don't use these levels they don't even think about it they have large orders to fill so you know it's not really a concern to them so we continue to see that lo and behold on friday after the market failed to push lower there was a very violent short covering rally straight up the profile shows this showing that you have a formation it looks like a letter P the letter P is indicative of short covering when you have kind of a, an upward move very thrusting and early in the session causing these single prints and then the rest of the value builds higher forming a letter P um, this is also important to note going forward that this type of action weakens a market and does not strengthen it going forward. So that's information you should carry forward is that when you see the P formation, which proves that it's a short covering type of move, that weakens the market because it takes buyers out. If a market is to be strong and stay strong, we want to see buyers in there that are not old business meaning they're not you know, taking care of old business, covering their shorts. We want to see buyers that are new business, that are bringing new buys to the table, buying stocks, futures, because they want to stay in the market. So that's basically what the profile is showing me. I'm going to be focused next week on this area a lot and see where value develops in relation to the 1515 to 1517 roughly area because I'm noting that over the last uh, three sessions we've had point of control relatively equal at that area. So I do believe the market perceives value here. Um, um, any meaningful rally early next week will obviously develop above this area. Uh, any meaningful sell-off would develop below with the caveat that I don't think anything serious can happen to the downside unless the psychological 1500 level here is resolved, meaning you know that we would see some hourly bars closing below it, a little bit more momentum to the downside and taking out this level. All right? And as I was saying earlier, if that was to happen, then the market will more than likely be targeting the 1480 because it's obviously the trend line uh, support right here. Okay, uh, Going forward as well into this week, I don't really have too much as far as stock plays. Just two things came up on my radar. One was Google, which on the daily looks extremely bullish and doesn't seem to me like it's had any sort of blow off top or anything yet. Um, I think the stock probably could go higher. Notice that it has been chugging up higher for a while but if you switch to a weekly it's done this before you've had like 12 or 13 weeks up here this is actually six weeks up so there certainly could be more upside um, the entry would obviously be a break above this downtrend line so it would be in the 808 to 809 area and the stop would obviously have to be below the trend line which would put this is here at uh, 796 so probably a stop say 795 so you're looking for about a $15 stop remember this is an $800 stock and your target would have to be about 830 to give you a, a two to one uh, risk reward all right the other one that is on my radar is Apple because we've had a very important sell-off on Friday that actually broke the stock below the lows that happened after the earnings report right here's the low on January 25th which was exactly 435 and Apple closed at 430 on Friday and if I move it up here I just want to show you a couple of things that might be coming into play on the weekly this is the channel I've been talking about notice that it 
terminates here just under 400 or I shouldn't say terminates but it's its bottom section is here and this Fibonacci retracement that you're seeing here the 50 and the 61.8 they're playing out on the longer term chart on the monthly and it's the Fib retracement of the entire move up so notice that I've started here where the move started from lows of like $78 all the way to $703 whatever that is 705 I think and notice that halfway back of this move is actually coming up there's a possibility that we come to this area relatively soon that area is around $392 I'll move it over so you can see here 393 actually 393.21 right in that area so there's something I'm going to be watching I'm currently short some 390 puts uh, not really in big size they're weeklies for next week I'll probably add to them uh, as we get closer to that level I will be working on some option strategies um, in order to possibly capitalize on a bounce from that 50 percent fib level um, so stay tuned for that all right that's all I have for this week um, on behalf of myself and the entire shadow trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia Pennsylvania I wish you good trading and good night Thank you.